So Irma is, Irma is a founding member of Transition Town, uh, yes. Vincent, from previously called Mount Hawthorne. Yes. And she's very passionate about little things like little free libraries. <laughs> Not all of them. And she's going to speak to you about our seed library that we've started a while ago. Five minutes. Um, I like the film. I think it's fantastic to, for somebody to document all this. So who is growing seeds here? Who is growing anything? So quite a few. And who is saving their seeds? Fantastic. We want to hear from you because this is our latest project here for Transition Town Vincent now. The city of Vincent has given us a bit of money to create some little free book and seed libraries. So these boxes, their bedside tables, we reconditioned it, we just painted it and have a beautiful logo here on the top as well. Right. And they are going out in the community, I think five already up in the city of Vincent. So in the bottom we will have books to, for you to donate, to pass on, for people to come and take a book and leave a book and to use this like a little community hub. And when we put in for this grant application we thought Books is great to share, but we want to say, share seeds. So the top is a compartment where there will be a little plastic container, most likely because they need to be kept dry, and we want to put seeds in there. I put some. I brought some sunflower seeds that I saved from my for myself for you to take home tonight if you're interested. You can as well. A guerrilla garden a neighbor if you feel that is something. They're not winnowed, so there are seeds and husks and different things in there, so please pass them around. And um, it is very easy to save seeds because this is the these are the seed pots from my sunflowers. They're not the normal big one sunflower that you have, but they are sunflowers that when you cut one off they grow two more. And so that's how they look. They look like nothing, but when you, I pass this around as well, when you then dig a bit into it, you can see the seeds pop out. And this one plant that I have got that came to maturity is so big, and there are thousands more. So I hope the city of Vincent will have lots of seeds from this sunflower plant around in the future. Um, yeah, that's, and what I do, for example, with my tomatoes, I just save them on kitchen towel. So paper towel, you have an old tomato that looks yucky, you don't want to eat it anymore, don't throw it away. Cut it open and just save it, just save the seeds on a paper towel. And it'll dry so you can easily store it when it's dry and then when you need seeds, you've got seeds. Very simple, you don't need to throw them away. So what they said in the movie, if you we, we don't do it yet, but we can all do it. Have a look in the stuff that you eat, the tomatoes, sometimes you don't use them in, in soup, you don't do the, put the seeds in there. Save them, find a little free library around the corner and get in touch with the guy who hosts them. If you're interested in having a little free library yourself, contact, with, contact me or connect with us on Facebook. We are still on Facebook under Transition Town Mount Horson, but we will change our name to Transition Town Vincent on Facebook as well very soon. And I just wanted to draw your attention to the Seed Saver Library, or it's the Bible for the Seed Saver, the Seed Saver Handbook. It's available, I got mine from Permaculture West. This is everything about seed, sa seed saving in the really good information, and it can be bought over Amazon as well. So that's what I wanted to share with you tonight. Thanks, Emma. Yeah. We're now here from Janet Grogan. Janet's very passionate. I can't express that word passionate enough about, about uh, how can I put it? Saving the world. Everything that <laughs> everything that, um, that Emma just talked about, seed saving. And I've got the seed library from Fison oh, here as well. And I think Janet's got a petition on the table, so before you leave, maybe you want to sign that as well. Yeah, what a fabulous film, really gorgeous. Um, and it, uh, it's, it's all about having choice, isn't it? Having the choice to grow what you want to grow without anyone telling you or taking it away from you. And our petition is just exactly about that. Giving farmers the right to grow GM free. Now, at the moment, they say, well, we've got coexistence. Well, that's, been, that, that's a myth made up by the GM industry. It's been sold to our governments and our, our regulators and it's been forced upon our farmers. Now, most of the farmers in this film, they were organic. 
But this whole thing about GM, it's not GM against organic, it's GM against all the other farmers. You know, it, it's, it's impacting on your right to grow what you want to grow because of contamination. And that impacts on us because if their choice is gone, we don't have a choice. We don't have a GM free choice. Even organic will be threatened. I often think organic is the biggest threat to the GM industry, but it's all non GM farming. All of it is a threat. And we should be holding that very, very um, tight and valuing it. And at the moment, our farmers, who are non-GM, and that's the majority of them by far, are facing the problem of contamination every time they put in a new crop. Because nobody is protecting them. Now, when we had our Liberal government, they said, well, common law will sort out any problems. If you have contamination, you, 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 know, you lose your crop or whatever you can resort to common law. And I don't know whether you know the story of Steve Marsh, the organic farmer from Cogena. Mm -hmm. um, in 2010, he found his neighbor's GM uh, canola on his organic farm, and he resorted to common law. Six years later, he was almost $2 million in debt, and the GM farmer won the case. Ridiculous. Common law will not help our farmers. So our petition is saying we need some form of farmer protection legislation put into place so that if our farmers do find that they have contamination and it is going to impact them financially, they will then be compensated fairly without having to go through six years of going through the courts and ending up owing $2 million, which is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, so. Um, how are we hoping to fund that is by making a, a, a perhaps um, some kind of funding that comes from GM sales and also to make sure that the coexistent uh, um, suggestions or recommendations are actually made mandatory. So, you know, at the moment there, there basically are no rules if you're growing GM. No, no, one's, no one's policing the rules. So that's why we are hearing of contamination all the time. We want the rules to be made mandatory. We want um, funding to come from the GM industry itself. And we want to protect our GM free farmers. So if you'd like to support us, there are two petitions over there, one for the upper house, one for the lower house. And that would be great. But uh, as we're talking about Monsanto, which was this, uh, this um, um, Shirley would like to tell us a little bit about Monsanto, if that's okay, because yeah. she's got some very exciting news. Just a question, Jeanette. Yeah. What crops are grown here genetically modified? Because it's mainly canola, isn't it? Yes. In Is there WA, anything else? In WA, we only have canola. In other parts of Australia, we have canola and cotton. So GM cotton and GM canola. Those are the only two GM crops we grow in Australia. Mm. Elsewhere, um, there are more. America grows 50% of all GM crops, practically. So. There, there are about 19 countries that grow any level of GM crops in the world, and all the rest are basically GM free. So it's not taking over the world, but it feels like it. <laughs> Thank you, Jenna. Thank you. Jenna. Thank you. I think Shirley Collins is also passionate about everything that Janet just spoke about. <laughs> and I love Shirley because she's one of the most passionate people I've ever met. And I've met thousands of people, so please welcome Shirley. Thank you. Um, I just have to say, in October last year, um, I went across along with about um, half a dozen others from Australia, went across to The Hague to what was called the Monsanto Tribunal. And that was where there were, represent there were witnesses or victims um, if you like, from six continents. Um, the representative from Australia was Steve Marsh, and they were presenting their case to a panel of judges on how they had been harmed from Monsanto, or related, it's not just Monsanto, but Bayer Syngenta Dow, they're all in there, um, but how they had been harmed, be it personally, with their own health, be it um, birth defects in their children, be it like in Steve Marsh where he lost his, um, basically his business overnight from losing his certification. Um, there were sci scientists, doctors and lawyers also uh, presenting. 
And this coming Tuesday night will be the judgment or the what, what's been called the legal opinion from that. And it's going to be live streamed. So at 9 o'clock our time, next Tuesday night, the 18th, um, tune in. Um, I don't have the link as yet, but if you go to the website monsanto-tribunal.org, um, the, uh, there's a lot of transcripts and videos up there from back in October that you can sort of have a look at. You'll be able to see Steve there somewhere. Mm -hmm. And, um, and yeah, the, the, this legal opinion is something that is supposed to be able to be used by the lawyers um, back in their own countries because like, like, like our country failed Steve, he appealed, like the, uh, our government failed him at the state level, then failed at the federal level. Um, so, and that's been repeated right around the world. So now it's the international community combining to say we've got to do something about this. And we're, try, we're trying to actually get, one of the other things they're trying to get out of it is um, ecocide to be a, an international law against humanity so that when lawyers fight in the international courts on behalf of the environment, they actually have some legal footing to, um, to, to stand on because it's very difficult at the, at the moment. So, um, yeah, what, so tune in if you can next Thanks, Tuesday night at 9 o'clock. Yes, we can. There's a seed library, Transition Town Mount Orphan. It started a seed library. If you're after particular seeds or just see me as well. Thanks. Thank